We are at what could only be called the point of no return. We've figured out where the bridge rectifier is going to go, mounted that, figured out where the capacitor is going to go. I haven't actually drilled those holes yet, but that's no big deal. It's time to cut some wire. This is the point at which you are sort of committed to doing something to your welder, uh, or at least making a, a repair of some kind. One thing I want to point out is that not only do we have these big heavy wires here, I'm going to start with the one for the ground clamp. Uh, notice that there is this little brown wire sneaking off of here too. This is where the power for the drive controller comes from. So. Unfortunately, what I wanted to do was to just take this connection apart and not have to, to actually cut any wire, but this needs to stay connected to the AC side of the circuit for the drive uh, wheel mechanism to continue to function, which means that probably we should have just left the original Harbor Freight insulation alone and come in here a little further and, and cut this wire because that's what I'm going to end up doing. I'm going to cut it downstream, if you will, of the original connection, and we'll just have to put some, some new heat shrink tubing or something over that. So anyway, let's start with the ground wire, simply because it's a little easier to work with. You can loosen the screw down here, get lots of slack, and uh, yes, when we're done with this whole process, the ground clamp wire is going to be, you know, as much as six inches shorter than it used to be. If that turns out to be a problem, we'll, we'll worry about it on the other end. That ground clamp ought to be replaced anyway. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to come right in here where this was pinched by the grommet anyway, and I am going to try and cut this stuff. Now, it is gigantic wire. It is 8 gauge wire, so probably the best I'm going to be able to do with these little schmull nippers is give it a crimp so I set a line and then take a couple of stabs at it to, to crimp it. Alright, there we go, we've done it. I'm gonna go ahead and strip some insulation back from these guys and try to get these ring terminals on. Now herein lies one of the difficulties with this process. This is 8 gauge wire. Good luck finding 8 gauge ring terminals anywhere. They supposedly have them at Home Depot. I went to three Home Depots. I couldn't find them. I looked online. You can order them, but of course we only need four and they come in quantities of 50 and 100 and things like that. So I bought these. They're 10, 12 gauge, but they've got a little, little extra space in there. I'm going to try and make this work. Um, if it doesn't work, you know, we'll move on to plan B. But in the meantime, I'm going to get to stripping this insulation off do a little crimping, and we'll see what we end up with. When I took the ring connector off to put the heat shrink tubing on, I noticed something that I kind of expected. Because this ring connector is maxed out at 10 gauge wire and we have eight, what really happened, even though this looks really nice, like, hey, look, all the wire pushed up in there. In reality, because it's stranded, what's happening is that some of the strands are just getting pushed down to the bottom and 10 gauges worth of copper goes into the terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick off a little bit of this copper and I'm going to actually cut it off. It's not going to matter in the slightest. Wire's ability to carry current is a function of gauge, yes, but it's also a function of distance. So what we've done is we've turned this into 10 gauge wire, but only for three quarters of an inch. So it's not going to make any difference at all. And now, my calculations are correct. In other words, if I got lucky with my guess, this thing should pretty much just twist on there without the kind of resistance I was feeling the first time. And sure enough, it basically just slides on there. So now we got the heat shrink tubing in place. We're ready to go ahead and crimp this connection down. And I'm going to give it a good solid crimp right in the middle. And that's not going anywhere, right? 
Now I can slide my heat shrink tubing back out just a little bit. And when we fire that up, it'll shrink down and we'll be left with a nice covered insulated connection, ring terminal on one end, the drive roll mechanism power is still coming out of here, no problems. Uh, likewise, on the ground clamp, I'm gonna slip a piece of heat shrink tubing over there. Don't need nearly as big of a piece because I don't have to get all the way back to this joint. It's lather, rinse, repeat for the other two connections. The problem you're gonna have is that unlike this one where you could just loosen the grommet and get lots of spare wire out, this one, you don't have a lot to work with. Um, if you wanna take this block apart up top, you can completely disconnect this wire. Um, I'm gonna try it without doing that, um, but you know we'll, we'll see. Now, I will tell you, this wire, this is the one that feeds the torch. We're a lot more concerned about being able to reach the rectifier on the side of the panel with this connection than we are this wire, because this wire, what's left of this, only has to make it to the capacitor which is gonna be, be way back in there. Um, and if need be, we can orient the capacitor so that the terminal we need to connect the torch to is, is on this side. Uh, we're gonna to have to run jumper wires from the bridge rectifier over to the capacitor, uh, which we're gonna to have to make. Um, so I would err on the side of cutting this further, further back up in here. Um, it looks like this connection coming from the transformer is, is probably going to make it without a whole lot of, of extra wire here. But again, you're going to have options for adding wire and moving things around on this end of the connection. If this side doesn't make it to the bridge rectifier on the, uh, on the side of the welder, you're going to be upset. So I'm going to cut this off, you know, maybe up here someplace. And here we have our other, our other connection. And likewise, back up in here. So let me get these stripped and heat shrinked and get some connectors on the end of them. And then we will come back and we'll talk about how we're gonna get from the rectifier over to the capacitor. When you're done fooling around with all these wires, you should have something that looks like this. Here's the one that comes down from the top, goes up to the torch head. This will get attached to the capacitor on the other side. Likewise, here's the ground clamp, which will end up being positive when we're done. But anyway, that's loose. And then here's our two leads coming off of the transformer that still have the brown wires attached so that the drive feed roller can get its, get its power where necessary. So all these things are, are ring terminaled up. The part we have to do now is I have to make two jumper wires because I need to be able to get from the plus and minus on the bridge rectifier, right? The AC is gonna come in from here, but the plus and minus going out needs to get over to the capacitor where these things will get hooked up. So that's gonna require two, I don't know, six inch leads of wire with ring terminals on both ends. I'm gonna put those together and then we will be ready for some assembly.